mosi nengwenyam. Your esteemed guest, tu vangashita ko eti balegi. When I had the privilege to meet His Majesty the first time, it was a rare privilege. But in that conversation, he was trying to find out where my ancestors come from. And my ancestors come. My grandfather comes from what is called Manika land in Zimbabwe. And his father comes from Eswatini. Now, you rushed to clap. So, after realizing the name of my grandfather, his just managed to tell me that my ancestors ran away from Eswatini because they were afraid of another warrior. I disagree. As we know, the king will never lie. So I went before God. I said, I need to give him another explanation. So here is the official story. And if you hear, if you hear a newspaper saying official story, they are about to lie. They did not run away. They were peaceful people. So they didn't want to fight anyone. Thank you so very much. And it is a very rare privilege to minister before a king. And it takes a man who understands the kingdom to understand how to react in the presence of greatness. And every preacher that preached here, the apostles, and I'm happy to see them here, they managed to explain what it is to stand before a king. And I'm sure they were the best people to actually explain it. Because they serve the king of kings who the king of our king. So it is easier to explain. But I want to start from Genesis chapter number one. Genesis It says, and in the beginning, and the word beginning there does not really mean beginning as beginning of the time or world. Because if you look at it, you will realize one important factor. That the book of Genesis, we do not find where God created the earth. Because in verse number two, it says, and the spirit of God hovered upon the water. And no one explains to us who created the water. Then it says, and darkness covered the place. And nobody tells us where darkness came from. So when he says in the beginning, he's talking about a beginning of this earth where the Adam comes from. It indicates to us that there was a previous earth before this one. Because in God there is no shadow of turning. There is no shadow, no darkness. So if there is no darkness, who created the darkness in verse number 2? I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. So in other words, God lived alone in what I call the community of the Godhead. He lived alone, communicated with himself. To the extent that the Bible says it this way, the Lord said to the Lord, 
That means God came out of himself and began to speak to himself. And then you find a part where he says, and let there be. But what every Swati doesn't understand, I had a privilege just a few days ago to minister at a certain church and I explained some few things that I'm about to explain today. And before I proceed, Your Majesty, I send, I extend greetings from your friend who is my president, President Bonangagwa. And I happen to be the presidential envoy and ambassador at large to 85 countries. But my message is not coming from the president. It's coming from the king of kings. Who is the king of our king? So I'm not representing the president in my preaching. I'm representing the king. Now, so if you look at it this way, the Bible begins to explain to us that God said, let there be. Let there be. So God begins to create. But what everyone in Eswatini does not realize is this was before Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 1. God spoke and said, let there be. But the first creation, your majesty, if you want to look at anything to do with geology and science the first thing he created was a mountain in this country I get it you are not hearing what I'm saying imagine the whole world there is a place called Makonjwa according to science it is the the oldest mountain range on earth what is in Eswatini that God starts by creating something here? It is not in America. It is not in Britain. That means God before Genesis 1 verse number 1 sits with himself and he says I need to create the earth and science agrees and science agrees. Science Geology agrees. That he started by creating something in Eswatini. Ah. Now, I'm not going to say this again. I know you're not hearing what I'm trying to say. Here. Just imagine the King of Kings. The one we call Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And he sits with himself from eternity past. He is called the king of the ages. Or the rock of ages. Not the rock of time. But the rock of the ages. And in the Hebrew and in the Greek, the word seems the same. It is the word eon. It has nothing to do with time. That means there was no time when he sat with himself. And if you look in verse number 2, and he said, the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And the word moved there is the word rahaf. It means to flatter in constant imagination of an outcome. So it wasn't by chance. He took his time to think what he would create. And he looked at America. He said no. He looked at Britain. He said no. He looked at Asia. He said no. Then he said I start by creating Makonjwa. I can see by the way you are clapping. Your clapping is infected by COVID. If you just understand that, then you realize the danger of actually ignoring the signs you are being shown by God. 
utawubona ke bungo wathi bekungana ke inkulungu leti bona ke zola khomisa tona inkulungu if you look at the name of god he is called the rock of the ages nawubona ligama lakhe inkulungu lokuthi waliduala lapha and then you go to sibebe rock bese uya ku sibebe rock and is 3 billion years old and it is the largest rock if not the second they said the second but it is the largest rock on earth single rock monolith on earth and it is in eswatin he is called the rock of ages and then he creates the biggest rock in this country there is something about it that you are not seeing God created this country with a purpose. But I want you to understand something. There is another thing you need to hear. That the Bible says it here. Jesus himself when he stood before the people he said something important he said when the end of time comes look at the vouchers And I want to repeat this I'm not speaking as an ambassador. I came to deliver a word as a prophet. I want you to hear this. Imagine creating this thing then Jesus comes when the end of the world comes. Look at the vouchers. Because where the vouchers are there is a carcass. Maybe you did not realize this. But Eswatini has the largest population of vouchers on earth. I'm still getting it so that you can get deep into it because it's taking time. There is nothing called coincidence with God. Coincidence is when God chooses to remain anonymous. When God doesn't want you to know he's the one talking, he puts coincidences in place. What are the chances that God creates the biggest rock here? What are the chances that the biggest and the oldest mountain, the oldest mountain rather, is in Eswatini? What are the chances? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Now, if you see vouchers gathering, and vouchers were created by God, so it doesn't mean to say vouchers are evil. They are also beautiful. We are part of those vouchers. In other words, you begin to see nations coming to this country looking for a carcass. If the Bible says there is a carcass, that means there is, there is wealth that is hidden underneath this world, this country, that the people are still going to realize and see and come to this. Preachers will come. Prophets will come. Rich people will come. Asians will come. White people will come. This is a prophetic word that you need to realize. And at that time when Jesus came, says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because it, it looked very small. But let me tell you something about a small country. Israel is also small. Israel and yet Jesus comes out of it. There is a power in realizing it. That it is not by chance. That there is only 12. Monarchs left on earth. And then you look at Jesus. What I like about the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't come to introduce a country. His first message is, Behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was not a country, but a kingdom. And everyone around the world is trying to introduce a certain level of country. Because every time you want to de-establish a, de de a country, or rather to remove, to destabilize a country, what you do is you change their culture. And to change a culture, you need to remove a king. 
Because the president is only interested with his party and his supporters. And yet a king's power comes from God. You have the greatest setup as a country. Because the Bible says it this way. It is the kingdom of God, not the country of God. The introduction was introducing a kingdom, the king and his domain. It was never a country. The plan of God was never a country. Israel was receiving its rules from God himself, directly from God. And they cried and said they want their own president. And the Bible says they were given Saul. But look closely, says, and Saul was anointed from a bottle, not from a horn. Bible says, Saul, what was wrong? He was a bottle, he was If you want, I want to read for you something that the that Isaiah says, Isaiah chapter number ten. And I will start from verse number twelve. I will tell you verse twelve. Are you there? And I'm about to finish. Sing that out I want you to see it. Isaiah ten verse twelve. nase akretsile yonge misebendi ake le melene nenza ba isiyon ne Jerusalem. We are good see. Yago ichesi sa ingosi as asiriya. Nenga el tapola yo. Lange mabomu el sentitu niya yo. Nange nga yuti pagamsa guayo. Lokse metu niya. Let me read it in English so you can see. Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed His war work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and of glory of His high looks. Verse number 13 says it this way, so that you do not forget who is doing this. This is done by the devil. For he says, meaning the devil, for he says, the devil says, by the strength of my hand is the devil. I have done it. And by my wisdom, for I am prudent, I have removed the boundaries of the people and I have robbed their wealth. I have put down inhabitants and I have put down their kings. In other words, the Bible is simply saying the idea to put down and to remove a king comes from the devil. Because the example of heaven is all about a king and his domain. Like I told you, I came here to release a prophetic word. I'm not here for jokes. I'm here to release a prophetic word. Imagine what Jesus said. The first words of Jesus ministering were simple. Behold, the kingdom is at hand. But if you look in the book of Galatians, he says Jesus did not just drop here. He says when the fullness of time came, the word is fullness there. When the fullness of time came, God sent his son. The problem of Israel was simple. They had refused a king. They wanted their own men. And Then God said, I will not bring my son until they understand a kingdom. So Israel went under the Roman Empire for years. Israel Being controlled by outside forces. So that they can understand what a kingdom was. Because before that they didn't understand there was a king. They didn't understand there was his domain. 
So God said, I will make them suffer a little bit and learn the lessons of what a kingdom is. So they went under the kingdom of an evil force but they understood what a king was so when Jesus came he said the fulfillment this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing that means in that moment the fullness of time had come now they understood who a king is and Jesus comes. It was easy for him to introduce. He just started by the words. Repent. For the kingdom. Nobody asked what the kingdom was. They immediately went. We know what you're talking about. So I'm here to introduce. A new Eswatin. That is mentioned by God. That the Bible itself in the book of Job, which happens to be the oldest book in the Bible, it says, There an old man where iron comes from. And the Bible says, There is iron in the mine, which is old, and it's in the oldest book, which is Job. And it mines iron. It mines iron. And yet the oldest mine is in Eswatini. Because of time, just raise your hands wherever you are. Father, I prophesy to these that are here right this minute that they understand that the setup that they have, the system that God has given them is actually God-ordained. And they are privileged, really privileged to be under a kingdom. I speak every blessing of the king over their life. Everything that tries to destroy it, I put an embargo on it that you not touch them. Whatever handwriting or ordinance written against this country, that ordinance is removed. Amen. Whatever disturbance coming from the pits of hell, we remove it in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My last words. The kingdom stands. By it. Oh, 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 oh,